right, and uh, welcome back in case you're joining us now. It's time for us to look at the dailies. And uh, <clears throat> sorry, I do apologize that my voice is a little bit under the weather this morning. And uh, uh, joining me to do that, we do have uh, Dekio Mukoba and uh, Kevin Osido from Governance Watch basically uh, here to go through the dailies. But before we start with the dailies, uh, we have a question that we are running today. And I just want to read some of the comments that have come through so far. Today is a day that we're expecting the president to give the State of the Nation address, and that's going to be happening around about 2 p.m. But uh, we had asked the question, what critical thing would you want the president to handle as he's giving the State of the Nation address? And some of your comments are already coming through. We have uh, MC Ras who says, I expect the president to speak about the famous handshake and what it means for Kenyans' unity, State of the Nation security, and how he plans to achieve his big four agenda. We have uh, Moha Fanki Wawajir, a resident from North Eastern, we need infrastructure, roads, universal health care, water, food security, empowerment through ir irrigation schemes, and unity of Kenyans. I'll read one more before we come to the dailies. Um, we have Jimmy Gakio who says the address of the nation have happened before and is all PR. The last that I watched was uh, names of corrupt officials read out by the president himself and putting everyone on notice a uh, date given. Give me one person who has been jailed. So they're still coming in and keep your comments coming through. I'll be reading through them as we go along. But for now, we want to start off with the newspapers and let's start off with the standard and uh, the headline is surprises for parents, pupils as schools reopen. Many schools are going back to school today, or rather many students are going back to school today, and apparently there is a surprise envelope uh, or surprise in the envelope for many parents. Let me start with you, Deki, on that particular headline on The Standard. And, of course, the, the surprise being mentioned there is things to do with flood, the changes that have come in, in as far as the medical cover for the students is concerned, the continual changes of top principals to other schools. And, of course, these are things that the students will have to deal with, the changes as well as the parents will have to deal with these changes, you know, moving forward. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things that are panning out. That are panning mm -hmm. out. Uh, Kevin? Uh, of course, the flood, we've had quite, uh, ra uh, you know, a, a very wet season as the kids were uh, home for holidays. And some of the schools may not even be able to open or there may be dangerous access to the schools. That's one of them. But uh, there is also the issue of uh, shuff reshuffling of principles, which has happened. So parents are likely to be met by new principles, you know, to uh, have their children uh, back to school. Yeah, precisely so. And uh, about 500 schools who uh, that are more or less affected and uh, I think that is uh, may not really be a surprise because somehow this has been on, on, on the news people have been talking about it when it started schools were still open though the reshuffling had not happened but uh, had not taken place but now here are the principals here are the heads of, of, the, of the schools and I think it really brings in uh, we'll be keen to look at how even the community members the the different board of management of the various schools and um, the teachers' associations and various stakeholders of these schools are going to take up uh, this new change. On the floods, I think it brings in the question of uh, <coughs> disaster preparedness and, uh, of course, partnerships between uh, the private sector, the public, and, uh, of course, the government, and even uh, county governments and, the, and national government, how, especially the areas, the counties are affected, where these schools are, how closely linked are they related to the national government and how are they able to mitigate and uh, towards the long the, the long term effect of it is how really are we prepared because many times we cannot uh, stop the rains and because of uh, effects of climate change we might not say okay let's let's not open schools now it will still continue to rain so how do we uh, deal with those challenges moving on absolutely yeah. so parents be ready for a new welcome to the schools and uh, that's basically the headline for the standard but also on the front page of the standard Yesterday was May Day, also known as Labor Day, or Labor Day, also known as May Day. And uh, this is basically a day that has been set aside to appreciate or to celebrate uh, workers and laborers. But there you go. Employers win 5% pay rise. Workers Day, employers have a reason to smile as minimum pay rise they resisted goes up by only 5% with a totally sparking reaction over Uhuru's PM post after 2022. Before we get to the political part of that celebration, the 5% percent increase of course for the worker um, minimum wage being a positive thing however i'm sure that many may not feel like it is much of a change decky 
Uh, of course, it is positive when it comes to the side of the employer because this is a reduction from the 18% that was proposed, you know, the last the last year. And so for them, it is a win. But you know, on the other side, for the side of the employee, this may not <coughs> necessarily be what they were looking up for. They were looking up for something that was higher than this. I think we need constantly, you know, be able to negotiate between the employer and the employee so that we get to a particular place where there is satisfaction not just for one side but even for the other side, especially when we are dealing with issues. Of of minimum wage, we are supposed to, you know, begin to be able to understand, you know, the cost of living, especially in the city, uh, you know, as vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, the amount of money that people make as minimum wage, mm -hmm. so that we come to, you know, an understanding at a place where these people are sustainable, so that you just don't do a job and you cannot be able to sustain yourself, sustain yourself. at any level. All right. And uh, Kevin, there's also now the politics side of it. And of course... <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, Francis Sorry. Atwoli, uh, making a statement that has been met with uh, some reaction. And his suggestion basically was that the constitution should be amended uh, to accommodate Uhuru Kenyatta after he has, uh, is done with his second term. And his reason, according to what he read yesterday, is because Uhuru Kenyatta is still young. Not new. This has been uh, here since the time when we started talking about the Constitution, uh, Constitution Amendment, Amendment. Uh, uh, Bill. Mm. And of course, uh, you note that there was a parliamentary sitting which uh, more or less uh, trashed and thrashed and uh, more or less sent this down the carpets. It did not go far. And now again, it's coming back. And when people like uh, the Kutu Secretary General speaks, you know that uh, there are certain parts of this, of, of more or less the government, because Kutu is really a major stakeholder <coughs> in governance and leadership of this country. So when uh, especially people like uh, Mweshimewa Francis Atwoli speak, you know that uh, more or less there could be some, some bit you of... You don't uh, think it's just Atwoli's personal view and feeling and possibly has nothing to do with State House? I do not think so. I think, think? Atwoli is speaking for someone. Mm -hmm. Atwoli is aware about what is just about to happen and if you really look at the... Because our political climate and my environment is very predictable and there are certain things that you will see happening so that certain things happen and that really probably is just trying to prepare Kenyans mm. that just be ready because I think from uh, a few insiders we probably should be getting ready as a country for a referendum and for what referendum. that means is what I think probably at all is beginning to prepare us for. Okay, Deki, yeah. what do you think of uh, 2020, well, amending the constitution to accommodate a young president? <laughs> uh, <coughs> really the issue is not, you know, the accommodation of somebody who is young Younger, is, uh, is us having a constitution that is good for us and sustainable for this nation so that we are not just changing, as you know, some people for have said, for individuals. Mm -hmm. You know, and after we change for one individual, then we have to move five years and change for other people. I think there needs to be a level of contentment as to some, if something is good for us, let us work with that and let us see the results of that. And if we are changing it, it's because we are changing it because there's a problem right. with what we already have and it is not serving us. And moving forward, we need, you know, to, to rethink about what we are doing. So I think as a nation, we need to really sit down and rethink what we need and how we need to shape our narrative and our structure politically and moving forward. of course, forward. not changing mm -hmm. the constitution for individuals, yes. but uh, for posterity mm -hmm. of the country. Let's look at something else that uh, also came out of that particular event yesterday, and that is on uh, page six. Raila, economic boycott is no longer useful, and uh, this, of course, is a number of companies that had been <laughs> Um, put on a list by NASA and this was because apparently at that time they were seen to support the government and especially during the election and had been uh, given a boycott but the boycott has been lifted. Kevin, do you think the boycott was effective from day one? Was there even a need to lift it? Um, yes and no. Yes because um, I think uh, people were not happy with certain things that had happened and that is really the essence and the reason for a boycott when you're not... Uh, happy with certain uh, procedures, you're not happy with the manner in which certain things happen, then uh, you really have to ventilate. And one of those ways is to look at uh, what really will hit your opponent or whoever is making you feel uncomfortable. And I think uh, one of the things that I picked out of this when the <coughs> Prime Minister was speaking was that he said that he was unhappy and angry with the outcome of the elections and so he decided to call the, the boycott. Mm -hmm. No, because probably the effects of the boycott were real as at that time we had losses I mean companies making losses which probably they may not want to talk about but it is true because some of us have uh, shops close to our doors, some of us have shops, some of us sell airtime
time and all these things and you can be able to tell when uh, there was a shift in uh, business exactly and right. and and when uh, the 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 demand other than what you have as supply is really <coughs> you know, going down so i think that uh, the boycott was effective it was a good way of sending messages but then the question is the sustainability how possible it is that even for other processes for instance when kenyans feel unhappy about healthcare can we have you know people who mean a lot in the political arena coming up to stand with kenyans to be able to call for boycotts on very important uh, goods or services of mm -hmm. the country so it doesn't have to be in my view that uh, it only happens when an, an individual or someone who feels uh, entitled you know does not meet his or her uh, expectations but but I believe that boycotts are supposed to be for the better good of the society. It has to be for the common good of, of everyone. And so for this, whether successful or not, I think it was for NASA because we had people just boycotting to buy airtime. Okay. Group, group side and, and, certain and, and, goods and Becky, and the other question, of course, would want to raise at a point like this is some of those issues that brought about the boycott, have they been dealt with or... Do we say goodbye to the boycott, put a blanket cover over those issues and move on as though nothing ever happened? I think that's where the big question is, because with the pulling away of some of these things, and after, especially after the handshake, that we seem to see such a seamless move between you know, the two sides. But the big question is, what are we addressing, or what are they addressing, or what is the one thing that they have spoken about that has you know, brought this calm and this peace to be? And I think that is the questions that Kenyans continue to ask, and even with the State of the Nation address. That this is one of the things that we need, to, we need to understand. Is this still personal? Is it something that is happening on a personal level where people are just getting their personal gain or is this something that is going to trickle down so that the common monainchi can really feel the effect of this handshake on a very positive you know on a very positive note so that when we move forward and again it's a political season that we don't get into all these wrangles and we get into trouble for people again to come and just shake hands and move for the two of them we need for this to be a ripple effect that the common monainchi is able and to feel. And the fill. structures to be put in place to where monainchi can feel that they uh, issues have been addressed. Now, if you'd like to get, uh, you know, a bit of the pomp and color that took place yesterday on the standard, there's quite a number of pictures there that basically show you what was happening in different parts of the country as the Labor Day celebrations were going on. But let me finish with the standard, and I'd like us to finish off with the cartoon, uh, which is right here on um, page uh, 14. And basically... What this is describing or showing is uh, a state of Nairobi. And uh, we've got Sonko right there. Oops, I think I may have made it too big. Uh, but Sonko basically calling for rescue. Um, if it can stop enlarging. There you go. Uh, but uh, basically the, the situation that we have in Nairobi, uh, uh, Deki looking at uh, a lot of garbage. There's nepotism. There's graft, there's all sorts of rubbish and floods, of course. But Sonko Rescue Team, which we know was <clears throat> out to try and help Nairobians, doesn't seem to be coming through this time. I think for, you know, there's a lot of challenges that the county faces that needs to be addressed <coughs> from that level of the county leadership. I think when uh, the governor came in, because he seemed to have had a very successful, you know, and effective team with his Sonko Rescue Team, the expectation was that the same would translate into his governance of the entire county. But it has seemed to be a challenge that they, the same is, effect is not seen as quickly and, you know, as fast as, as people may have expected. Mm -hmm. And that is where the challenge I think that he, he needs to continue, you know, to do the work and especially with all the wrangles that are going on, that needs to cease so that the work is seen to be done, you know, moving it. forward. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kevin, I don't know you're from Governance Watch and therefore <laughs> you look at matters governance. One of the things I've noticed yeah. with uh, Sonko's social media um, page, it's very active with all sorts of things happening. And of course, there are those who are for it. There are others who are saying, work silently. You don't really have to announce what you're doing. Let us feel the effect. I don't know whether you felt the effect of Sonko's work on the ground. The governor of the, county, the city county government of Nairobi needs help. He needs immediate help because uh, <coughs> Sonko was elected on the whims of you know, popularity, his popularity and the manner in which, as Deki has rightfully said, mm -hmm. he was able to respond effectively and very efficiently to things which really affected the common monarchy, like he was an instant coffee operator. You know, it's happening here, he shows up. Unfortunately, when people have trusted you with leadership and then they see this kind of mediocrity, they see this kind of... Uh, 
unfairness with regards to dealing with their issues, the issues that affect them. It really does not uh, mean a lot to me, and especially when you are a governor of, of, uh, of the, the seat of power, Nairobi, it, it means that people are looking up to you, and I think that Sonko now needs to really concentrate on uh, what he needs to do. It is good that he's using his social media pages to be able to share what is happening, but probably to advise is that the county government's act of 2012 really mandates county governments to be able to put in place platforms where the citizens can be able to communicate effectively with the county. <coughs> that does not have to be the Facebook page of the governor. Mm. So I think, um, and if you read that, if you look at many of those comments, really, there are people who are feeling frustrated, there are people who are feeling uh, wasted, there are people right. who are feeling like we elected you to go and do certain things which you are not doing. And we're so not the governor, the effect of your exactly. Work. So service delivery issues. Nairobi in, in 2018 should not be looking like what it is look uh, what it is looking like right now. And especially when a governor was elected to an almost 89 percent plus, you know, mm. popularity vote, then decides not to do what he needs to do. Yes, of course there are challenges as the cartoon <laughs> is portraying, but I think Sonku needs to put up to assemble a team that is able to help him deliver. He needs to also come down to the level of his team and just you know have have a candid discussion around what needs to be done in what Nairobi done. and do exactly what needs to be done all right yeah. let's now move focus to the daily nation and this morning on the daily nation the headline is shock over plea to extend uhuru's rule beyond 2022 and this of course was a statement made by francis atwoli uh, during the may day uh, speech that is given by the court to boss and of course it has elicited different kinds of reaction but we've already commented on that and of course one of the other things that was uh, taking center stage is that of the handshake and uh, effects of the handshake may be being seen we do know that recently there was a 14 member team that was unveiled Deki and uh, seeing Raila there and also calling off the boycott might be a step in the right direction Yes, uh, the effects of the handshake definitely are being seen in terms of the peace that is there, in terms of the fact that it looks like now people are willing to work together. But the politicking has not, has not ceased, and primarily because an understanding of this entire handshake has not been brought to the open and to the front. And therefore, it leaves a lot of vacuum and a lot of speculation, you know, in place. Because, we, you know, the questions are still being asked, what is it about? What is behind this handshake? And I think that you know they owe it to Kenyans to you know be able to come to the front and let us know that this is what is happening and this is what we have because then these are leaders not just for themselves but they are leaders for the people and so I think it's about time that you know even as the team is being constructed and for, you know formulated that now we begin to be brought into view of what they have in mind for of this what they nation. Have in mind. All right and uh, well let's finish off with a cartoon there on uh, page 14 of uh, the nation because this basically describes one of the things that you're likely to find and it is floods and school buses might have to be traded for school boats uh kevin um, uh, kevin Osid on, on on you know basically the situation that parents are likely to face as they go back to school or as they yeah. take their children back to school yeah this is quite unfortunate and i think uh, as we write for as we said earlier on the question <clears throat> is how prepared we are and how we are also able to deal with the psyches of these uh, pupils as they go back to school, because this is really going to uh, affect them in one way or the other, even the teachers. So I think the infrastructural um, engagements and what national and county governments can be able to do together, and just coming from the devolution conference, where in intergovernmental relations was one of the biggest discussions. Mm -hmm. So how we are also able to look at uh, the interrelationships between national and county governments with regards to dealing with these kind of issues is really something that I think, if well taken care of in the spirit of the handshake, should be able to respond to some of to these some shocks of those, and, uh, and issues. And now we want to wind up with our response mm -hmm. here, but maybe uh, Deki, what is the one thing that you think the president should handle or tackle in the State of the Nation address today? I think that one of the major things that maybe we'll be all looking forward to is for him to be able to peel off and begin to allow us to understand what is behind, especially this handshake between him, him and, and Honorable Raila Odinga. Odinga. Okay, mm -hmm. Kevin, one thing uh, you would say the president should tackle today? Uh, break down the big four. What does it mean to Kenyans? Mm -hmm. What does it mean to young people who are 
the millions who are unemployed. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to putting food on the table? So yes, very uh, interesting ideas, but what does it really mean? What does it really mean? To the common All right. citizen. Thank you very much, Kevin Osido and Deki, um, uh, for, for joining us this morning, basically to uh, look at the dailies. But looking at your feedback this morning, the question that we have asked is what one thing, what critical thing that you think the president should handle in the State of the Nation address? And I'll just read some of your comments. We have Peter Getata, uh, who says, realign national government with priority of the day. Rain should be a blessing, not a curse. Uh, we have so many people being displaced by rain and sad, um, still food rotting in farm, food rather, uh, rotting in farms and lack of proper storage facilities and inability to get to the markets in time. Mwalimu Robin says uh, the dawn strike. That is the lecturer strike. Uh, we have uh, B. Kivua uh, who says that uh, he should encourage his people in government to continue looting public coffers that's what is clearly standing out for them. Kudos. Rather sarcastic comment right there. Uh, we have uh, Kwanda Blog uh, who says corruption, corruption, corruption. I'm too much borrowing from China. The government will soon be bankrupt and the civil servants will lose their retirement money. Keep your comments coming. We're going to keep that conversation going right here on Morning Express. For now, we'll have to take a short break. But do stay with us right here on Morning Express. We've got more stories making headlines coming up. But also, we'll be catching up with our parliament reporter, and that is pa Patrick Amimo, who's going to be giving us uh, details and updates of what to expect in the State of the Nation address, which is expected to be given by the president today. For now, we take that short break. We'll be right back.